Come on, guys. Just going to answer a few of your questions that I saw on the Dennis Martin subject. And I know in my other videos, I just wasn't real plain on what I thought happened. I've been questioned about that quite a bit. So I've stepped away from the house here just to kind of tell you exactly what I think happened. Now I told you what I've been told and the stories that was passed around to me when I was younger about the the Bigfoot and the, the feral men and stuff in the park. Speaking of which, there's a Bigfoot now climbing that building. No, not the guy on the bike. It's kind of weird. Never thought I'd live next to King Kong. Anyway, yeah, just right behind it there. Anyway, let's get back to Dennis Martin. I'm going to be as matter of fact as I can with this. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for nobody else. If you're part of his family or you're offended by what I'm going to say then just go ahead and don't don't watch it right now just stop Dennis Martin was taken by a feral man from Spence Field in the Smoky Mountains in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park uh, few people know this fewer than I thought know it I actually thought more people knew it than what knows it most everybody in my family knew it. Most of the neighbors. Uh, people that lived just on the outskirts of the park knew it. Now you go further downtown, they know. They probably didn't know it. But he was taken by this feral man. And no, they wasn't going to take him to raise him. Uh, it's probably more malicious than that. But it's going to end in cannibalism, there's no doubt. When they took these people's dogs and pigs that lived on the outskirts of the park, if they would find anything left, it would just be bones. So that's what he was taken for. Was he killed by this creature? Uh... I would like to think that the creature killed him more so than it's been suggested by some people that the maybe the Green Braves had a hand in this. You know, if they found him, could they turn him back to his family and him tell this horrific story of these creatures? You know, our government, <laughs> it is what it is. But I don't know, I'd like to think that's not what happened. Or was his body ever found? I'd heard it was. You know, I heard it wasn't, but I'd heard it was found also. And that's what led to the belief in the cannibalism part of it. But, uh, it wasn't no Bigfoot that took him. That's not the nature of a Bigfoot. They're, they're not the take captive type. And they're not as aggressive. If you look up Tennessee wild man, these things are just, uh, and they're easily confused with a Bigfoot due to their appearance. But like I said in another video, some of them, some of them would almost have a humanish nature to them, except for maybe their wild, hairy faces and teeth all genetics like that but there's a difference between them and bigfoot a lot of people now spot something like that in the woods it's all the same some people was questioning me saying well you said a feral man got him and then one time you said something like bigfoot got it's basically when you get right down to it it's the same thing except the bigfoot it's bigger and not as aggressive but no, he was taken by a feral man, and he wasn't the first. He wasn't the first to be taken. Uh, 
kids went missing the turn of the century there was some that went missing in the 20s and the 30s it's not documented because this was just a little bit more than a settlement then so those people who want proof I also have people who say you have no documentation well no they don't write this stuff down on anything if you don't ever want somebody to know your secrets then you don't write them down so they didn't write this stuff down for people to find they didn't pay these men with checks when they went out and killed these things so they would pay the people in the community they had people that they knew they could trust Unfortunately or fortunately, whichever one you want to look at it, my family, some of my family was one of the people that got paid to go exterminate these things. So the National Park could come in here. And this started years before the park ever came in, actually. But they'd go terminate these things under the table deal and they would get cash for ever how many they killed turned in and no they didn't take them downtown at the courthouse and turn them in neither so there's no documentation of any of this i can't believe people are silly enough to suggest something like that but anyhow um i heard these things was burnt in a fire uh also there was a bad rainstorm that happened so I also heard that the ones that wasn't burnt in a fire was taken and incinerated. So, again, there's no receipts on any of this. So that's what happened with Dennis Martin. And it was covered up. It's still being covered up to this day. The, uh, the guy everybody talks about, the Dave Politis, he knows about 70% of this. He knows about the cover-up and the wild men. I don't think he knows about the people being paid to go out and exterminate these people. But uh, he did say that uh, he was going to hold a news conference one day in Knoxville. And when he told them what he was going to tell people, that everybody got up and left the room and said, your story will never make the air. They will not run this story around here and run people off from this area. So that's a little bit more on what went on with Dennis Martin and the Dennis Martin family. And uh, some people says the Keys family didn't say that uh, they found a man with something like a boy draped over his back. I heard that they said it. And if they was made to change their mind, then they was persuaded to change their mind. I don't think they would just do it on their own. So that's just a little bit touching more on Dennis Martin. And that's exactly what I think happened to the boy. I don't believe that uh, my kinfolk would lie to me about none of it. And I have no reason to lie to you all about any of this. I'm not gaining any money from my videos not begging for subscribers i just want this burden taken off my back what i know i didn't realize there was such an interest in this story until it started popping up on youtube everywhere and i'm sitting here thinking well i know what happened so no can't prove it not at all but before i left this world i wanted to to make this video so, what trails did these wild men take? Well, mostly the ones around towns and around Cades Cove. They stayed down low because it got cold. They would venture higher. Somebody went looking for them. They knew not, most of them knew not to touch nobody or it would bring down the fire, which it did. But, uh, the Allen Cave Bluff Trail. It used to be said that you could go up there if you've ever been to the Cave Bluffs. 
and you could see these footprints all over because it's just sand once you get up there it's pulverized rock and sand and the park rangers would say that they would rake this of the night time you know like you would a baseball field just just to see the next morning footprints everywhere so they would kind of gauge how many how many's left how many's out there so and i'm told that there's still footprints up there not like there used to be and i've also been told that if you stand on the cave bluffs of the night time and it's good and dark that you can hear a like an indian drum beating off in the distance now if you've never seen that place or never been there you should google some images of it it's a real haunting looking place it's beautiful but as you look out from where the cave bluffs view is you can see over and through mountains and valleys seems like forever and uh there's a lot of things could live down in there there's a lot of noises come out of there funny sounds screams i mean just ungodly sounds in there if you've never been there or been up there especially at sunset of course they don't want people on the trails at sunset for obvious reasons you know don't go on the trails at sunset you might get lost and for the people who thinks that these people are just getting lost if you're ever up in the mountains hiking that's just common sense if you hiking you're either gonna hike up or down i mean it's mountains there's not that many flatlands here if you're going up and you get lost turn around and go back down your car is not going to be at the top of the mountain okay there's not going to be anything up there for you you go down follow the trail down if you get off the trail then follow down to the bottom foot of the mountain where you will find the creek and all creeks lead to rivers or highways it's as simple as that why any of these elderly people would get off the trail is beyond me. Like the case of uh, Trina Gibson. Okay, she went up there and she did. She got off the trail, got off the trail in the worst spot ever. So they made up some story that she was going to meet her boyfriend up there. And that's where, that's, that's what happened to her. Well, that's not what happened to her. You would not meet your boyfriend and get off the trail where she did in a thicket like that. I mean, she could have met her boyfriend at the local Walmart or Kmart parking lot and went with him there. Uh, you know, he's not going to be waiting in the woods up on top of this mountain for her. But that's the excuse the media made in that one. That's what they used, that she met her boyfriend or she, then it went from that till she was took captive by somebody that her the dogs traced her path back to the highway and she disappeared from there but uh i'm not saying that that's true or false it's just a far-fetched story sounds like to me i don't believe it i believe she got off the trail i believe she saw something and got off the trail to investigate and she was never seen again and then there's a there's other cases of an elderly lady, I won't say elderly, but an older lady who disappeared on the other side of the mountain, on the other side of the Clingman's Dome Trail, which is another trail that I would stay off of over the night time. So people ask me if I thought that this is this what's going on in the other national parks. And I'm just gonna tell you what my grandmother told me. I talked to her when I was young. She thought that the way that the white people done the native americans and the indians of this land that they come in on the trail of tears and uh took them out they would actually go into their home that morning and finish their breakfast for them sit down and eat their breakfast as they was dragging them out of the house them and their kids and that's a real black eye to us americans but what are you going to do? We wouldn't be here if they didn't. I'm not going to argue any of the points. It was wrong. But the her seeing this is a, these lands are cursed. 
And if you look at every spot where there's a national park, for some reason, that was a exact spot that was inhabited by Indians. Every place, just about. Now, I know Indians inhabited everywhere across this great land. But if you just look where these parks are, right here, the Cherokee Indians, I mean, it's thick. And just north of here, the Shawnee, I mean, and you go out west. So, I think it's cursed. And that's exactly what she told me. This land's cursed. It's cursed with the blood of these Indians. So, uh, that's what I think's going on with these people disappearing. Now, how they're disappearing, I don't know. I don't know. But the Indians were more spiritual. They knew what to do. They could pass down curses. So, I don't think it's no big coincidence that, uh, that these people go missing out here on these national parks and trails that used to be home to these Indians. It's no big mystery to me at all. So with that being said, of course on the Dennis Martin deal, they couldn't come out here and tell people that these animals were taking kids. That's why nothing was ever settled with Dennis Martin case. That's why you'll never hear, it will never be settled, I promise you. It will, unless they decide to tell the truth, it will never be settled. Now, speaking of all that, I wasn't going to drag you all into this drama, but I have been going to try to make this video for about the last three days. And every time I come down here, there's a either a black SUV or a white SUV easing along this road right here behind me. And that would be ordinary because I'm in a cemetery, but what's spooky is nobody gets out of it. And that's happened since Friday, I guess three times now. It's weird. But I'll keep my eyes on it and they stay way back. Can't make anybody out. And uh, so I just leave. I don't let nobody know who I am because these people would say I'm costing them all kinds of money people's not coming here so I'm costing the hotels the motels the tourist trap the national park got a lot of people to make mad over this video so I thought I'd just throw that in there just just in case I needed to for some reason but I'm gonna get off from here now and let you all be I know I sort of just rambled and went in different places on this. I just like to kind of walk and talk, tell the facts. Like you was just walking here with me, you know, I don't put no fancy pictures or anything. Nine times out of ten, people who put those pictures on when we're doing their video is not an actual photo of what they're talking about anyway. So it's just us walking and talking and telling you like it's told to me years ago. I have a lot more stories to tell, a lot of stuff to tell happened in this area. Uh, a lot of stuff that I'm ashamed of went on in this area. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about back in the day. But I've got a lot of stuff to tell, a lot of stuff to expose. I'm going to try to keep my identity to myself for me and my family. Anyhow, man. Get off from here. Thank you all for listening, and I'll be back on here shortly.